Hello and welcome back to another history special and today I'm in the village of Wheating in Norfolk. I'm going to take a little walk around the outside of Wheating Castle which is just ahead of me through these gates. I'm going to walk around the outside first. It's such a glorious day today. Walk around the outside of the moat. The moat was a later addition to the uh, to the castle, and I call it a castle because it's signposted as a castle. Um, it was built not for defensive reasons, but for status reasons to show the wealth of the family who built uh, the manor house originally and lived here. It was built by a man called uh, Hugh de Pay in about 1180. And they were a very wealthy family indeed, descended from Norman barons. But now, wow. Wow, what's this? Let's take a look through here. Let's cross the moat. Let's walk into the moat. Oh my gosh, I've got to watch where I'm going. I'm going to head up here. Brick built structure. Wow, this is an old ice house. Used to store, obviously store ice in here, and, uh, and probably provisions as well. The coolness of the ice would keep um, meats and uh, and other perishable goods uh, relatively um, relatively fresh. Sort of a modern sort of uh, fridge. It's very dark inside. Don't know if I can go in or not. Let's have a little look inside. Wow. Yeah, it's too dark. I can't actually see anything in there. But I've seen ice rooms before. Many years ago, I went to uh, the Canal Museum down at King's Cross. And they had an ice house there, an ice room, which was uh, quite interesting to see. But just ahead of me is the, uh, is the castle. Flint built structure. How amazing, gosh, that's quite, that's quite impressive for a ruin. Considering it's been here, what the best part of uh, 800 years. It was abandoned in the 14th century. So the family didn't, di didn't live here too long. But it's a very grand structure indeed. See the flint on the outside, and also the put log holes as well. These were holes that were dug into the, uh, or put into the uh, the sides, the outside of the uh, of the castle, and the wooden poles would would, would be put into uh, these holes to hold up the wooden scaffolding on the outside during the castle's construction. So they're called put log holes because logs were put into them. The area on, on the side here, which just come out of, is the, is the services area. Sort of the kitchen area, food preparation, storage, that sort of thing. Not too far away from the, uh, from the ice house. And the next room along is the Great Hall. Let's walk into the Great Hall. I can imagine in the day, Everyone's sitting around, big open fireplace, having banquets and, and other activities in here, perhaps medieval dancing. And perhaps the local business would have been conducted in here as well. Sort of an early sort of a type of council. But yeah, gosh, I do like these old flint walls. They're very reminiscent of the, uh, the building construction at the time. I grew up in, uh, in Burke Hampstead in Hertfordshire and the ruins of the castle there, an old Norman Motton Bailey castle. Um, it was rebuilt around the same sort of time uh, as this castle, around about the, uh, the 12th century. And the, uh, again, it's a flint built uh, construction. And next to Monarch Long, you have all the, uh, all the rooms, all the apartments, three story apartment block here on the part of the tower. It really is actually considering it's been abandoned for 
best part of around 600 years. It's still in uh, remarkably good condition, it really is. There's a lot of flint in the area, a lot of flint in Thetford. Around the side here, let's go through the wall, we go into uh, what would have been a, a garderobe area. So it's labelled up as a garderobe. So the toilets would have perhaps emptied down into here and people would have come through the entrance in order to uh, scrape up you know what. I think I was looking up above there's some, uh, some windows would have looked out from the first floor. So there must have been a room above here which would have been the garderobe area. But yeah, gosh, how fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. There's quite a few information boards up around the, uh, the side of the, uh, uh, the castle grounds. Uh, it's managed by English Heritage. They've got no end of properties uh, around, the, uh, around the country. Many like uh, Wheating Castle are free to enter. You just have to go onto their website and, uh, and look for, the, look for the, uh, the properties which are free to enter. You come across an absolute gem like this, it really is. And as I say, on a warm sunny day today, uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely delightful. But there we go. Little tour there of, uh, of Wheating Castle. 45 manor house, built at the end of the 12th century and abandoned about 200 years later. Imagine life here in medieval times, although basic it would have been. It could have been quite enjoyable, especially in a, in a house like that. It's a great shame that, the, uh, that nobody actually moved in and renovated it throughout history. Because it could have been quite a, quite a beautiful property today, if it had been managed. But equally beautiful is the um, is Wheating Church. One of those churches with a round tower and uh, battlements on the top. It looks like you're fortified top. So I'm going to leave you with some pictures of the church here uh, at Wheating. What a beautiful building it is too. Again, built in flint. Absolutely wonderful. So thank you for joining me today on this history special and um, we look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course you can watch all these history specials early on Patreon if you become a member and sponsor my channel. So here are some pictures of Wheating, of the parish church here at Wheating. Thanks for watching.